Are you having a hard time turning off from work? And are you sitting at the dinner table with your spouse actually thinking about the things you still need to be doing? Chances are it's time for a change. And, you know, maybe you've tried it already. You're like, I just need to work harder, but I'm still so distracted and I just can't seem to figure it out how to turn off my brain. In this episode, I'm going to give you four tips that are quite unusual that might help you really turn off and on at the right times. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Fast Forward with Amy show, the show where we lift your life and business with simple strategies. I'm Fast Forward with Amy, your host and coach, and I'll bring you a new episode every Tuesday. Many of my clients have been asking me, Amy, how do I turn off? I have such difficulty not thinking about work. I feel like I always need to be busy and... Basically, what they're saying is that their body is kind of taking a run with them and they aren't able to really control what they do anymore because they're constantly checking their phone. They wake up and go to sleep with their phone. And I am definitely guilty of some of these things or of being on too late sometimes. And I've also found some ways to um, help myself relax and to really turn off. And lately it's been going better and better. So I thought I'd make an episode about this because... This is something that I'm focusing on a lot in this quarter of Q2 uh, 2023, which is when I'm recording this. I am highly focused on my health and I've been improving a lot of stuff as well as my clients because I'm hosting this small mastermind where we're actually consciously working on our health and our health habits as CEOs. And this was one of the big themes that came up in some of our coaching calls. So how do you turn off? I have a couple of steps I've written down. This is, we could talk about this for months, or we can talk about this in one podcast episode. So today we're kind of going to fix that feeling that you have, the guilt that you have around when you're not busy, the feeling of unfinished business when you finish up your work and you're anxious sitting at the dinner table and still checking your phone, stuff like that. We're going to talk about that here. So um, if you feel like you belong in this episode, continue listening. Um, I believe that we're currently creating a society of very overstimulated, unfocused people. So I am a highly sensitive person and I also have some people on my team who aren't highly sensitive and sometimes they're like, haha, I'm not highly sensitive. But after this day, I kind of feel like I now finally get what or being overstimulated means. And we've talked about this a lot. And one of my worries also as the boss is that my own team is too overstimulated, for example, because I see them being on a lot. Now, luckily, they're also still able to put the phone down and be very focused. And I don't mean this so they provide good work for me, but I also just mean it for their mindset because it wouldn't be good if they wouldn't be able to focus anymore because it would mean that their anxiety would also be going up. Um, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not going to use any difficult terms. I'm just going to share some of my own experiences in this. So what I see, especially with my clients, is that they wake up and they're on. And one of the reasons this happens is because of dopamine. So phone usage is linked to dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter and it has to do with kind of like a reward center in your brain. I'm not going to do the medical explanation of this but basically what happens is you feel like you need a little bit of an energy hit you pick up your phone you see notifications you check the notifications you kind of get a little bit of a jolt of oh yay then you put down the phone you're you kind of get a letdown and you pick up your phone again and the cycle happens again and again and again and this has led us to being in a society or living in a society where we have incredibly short attention spans much shorter than we used to have an attention span when we were in school, for example, and where we are all multitasking and where singular focus has completely flown out of the window. And it has to do with that reward loop. Because as an entrepreneur, for example, one of the most difficult things, which is actually one of the biggest success factors for entrepreneurs, is the ability to look long term. So I have this theory together with my best friend and we have the theory that very successful business people have gotten to a point in their life where they are very good at managing dopamine, short-term versus kind of like the long-term rewards. So when you aren't managing dopamine, well, in my opinion, this is all, as I said, not scientific. This is just how I see it happening, is that uh, many of us have, for example, a stressful day and at the end of the day, we kind of want to relax by getting some fun dopamine hits. So we 
know we should go to sleep, but there's no dopamine in going to sleep. So we have our phone and we're on the couch. We're like, I know I should go to sleep, but I'm checking my phone and some notifications. Ha ha. Oof. How many people have watched my story? And in the meantime, the television is running. If we go back 20, 30 years ago, people would have been just watching television, not doing anything else. In the meantime, we do two things at the same time. Or we eat in front of the television because we want to relax, which actually means that we're just shutting down a piece of our brain and we want to distract ourselves. All of this isn't helpful. So what basically happens is people say, hello, I'm overwhelmed by work. I have too much work. I believe, unpopular opinion, that many of us don't have too much work. We're just on too much the problem doesn't just lie in not turning off at the end of the day. It lies in the fact that all day long we are doing many things at the same time. We get out of a meeting, we walk to the toilet, on the toilet, we check our notifications, we open the Slack app. I see Annalise looking at me like, ha ha ha, this is me. <laughs> uh, so for example, one thing I used to do is during podcast recordings, I would check my phone in the meantime. Now I've consciously not turned it on because I know if I... I'm in podcast recordings and I'm like, I have a 10 minute break between recordings. Let me chill by turning on my phone. That seems like a good idea, but it's actually ridiculous. So what we've done now as a podcast break is we just chatted for 10 minutes. We weren't like then checking other stressful notifications that, what is that? It's because we like chaos. We like just, ooh, another problem. Haha, <laughs> I can get a little bit frazzled now. No, there is no use in checking your email on the toilet when you aren't even able to formulate a response to the email. So one of the quickest ways to teach your brain to turn off from work, for example, but to also just feel more relaxed in general is to start managing those dopamine hits from your phone. And I don't have to say this, you know this, I know this, but the easiest way to do this is to buy an alarm clock. <laughs> I have a Philips wake up light. I got it a few years ago as a birthday present. I still use it. Um, so this is like the light goes on and it wakes you up. Super annoying. Um, and you can set it to a sound that wakes you up like the waterfall. I have the birds. I will tell you there is a very big disadvantage to having this, which is in summertime or in springtime when the birds start waking up earlier. I think those are the birds that are there to wake me up. <laughs> So I know midsummer I'll start waking up at 5 a.m. because I'm like, ah, the birds are waking me up. <laughs> They're not the birds of my Philips wake up light. These are actual birds. It's a problem. I'm very trained, attuned to waking up from the birds. But, oh my God, your life is going to be so much better when you stop going to bed with your phone and you start stop waking up with your phone. I was talking about this a while back with a group of entrepreneurs and one person said, oh, but I like using the phone because the light, I always thought it made me wake up. But what it's actually doing is it's teaching your brain like high alerts. Let's get crazy from 7 a.m. in the morning. It's so bad for your brain because let's imagine you wake up with a battery every morning and if you slept well, your battery is filled up or charged. And every time you get the dopamine hits, but then the letdowns is like your battery goes down and down and down and down. Before you know it, 4 p.m., your battery is dead. But you don't have a charger because you're not going to bed until midnight. There is a gap. So we should make sure that our battery lasts until the time we go to bed because then we can make proper choices and go to bed on time. So it's a very vicious cycle or a visual cycle, like some people say. Um, <laughs> it's a joke. Uh, <laughs> if you have to say it's a joke, it's not funny. It's what we say. Um, <laughs> I was going to say something. I know this is so difficult and it has to do with habits. And I know that when I'm on a vacation or I'm on a trip, I actually fall back into this habit of checking my phone in the morning because my phone is my alarm clock when I'm traveling. So break the habit by installing a different phone and then a um, different alarm clock. And then, for example, I have my phone charger in the kitchen or in my office. So I'll, at night, I'll be like turning it off and then I'll plug it in the charger. And I know like I've plugged it in the charger. Now I'm going to plug myself in the charger in my bed. No pun intended. Not dirty. Did not mean that in a dirty way. Um, the dopamine is so big. Obviously, turn off your notifications. If you are here and you still have notifications on on your phone, what the fuck? Like, why? 
<laughs> Why would you do that to yourself? It amazes me how many notifications people have on though. I'm not saying I'm the best at this because I have many, many unread messages. It's just because during the day I'm like, I'm working. So Instagram notifications don't have them. WhatsApp notifications don't have them. Group message notifications kill me now. Um, granted, um, if my friends hear this, I will have to add that I am not the person who buys the birthday gifts for the friend group. I am terrible at that. I've also told them, if you need me, please call me. I am terrible at messages. And I think after seven years of telling them this, they're this close to accepting it. <laughs> they just call me when they need me. Um, but turning off those notifications is a good way to start turning off more because notifications are your phone. It's kind of like still being friends with your ex on Facebook. If you would still spend time on Facebook or let's just say Instagram, you are still following your ex on Instagram. You are doing great. Your energy is high. You're loving your life. You're like, yes, I feel amazing and sexy in my body. You're scrolling on Instagram and boom. He has a new girlfriend. Boom, he got her a ring. Boom, the ring is bigger than the ring you got. You were doing fine and all of a sudden you weren't because you are getting in the stimuli. If you would have just muted the person, you wouldn't have gotten the stimuli, stimuli and ruined a perfectly good moment. This is what happens when you have your notifications on, you're doing fine and then it just wrecks you. Like you get a, a, a weird email in who has notifications of emails on? Is something on fire? Are the emails on fire? Are there fireballs being thrown at you from within the screen and the email is a fireball? It's like, if you don't pour water on this, this problem is going to escalate right now. No. How many emails are actually urgent? Almost none. I'm not saying don't check your email like I do. <laughs> I'm saying maybe just check it after you've kind of determined you're focusing your plan for the day and not as the first thing you do in your day. So not on the toilet as you're waking up. Because you get so disconnected from yourself and the core of what you need. You forget to eat breakfast. You forget to check in with your partner. How many people go to bed just looking at their screens, wake up looking at their screens. Have more sex. Spend less time on your phone. If you don't have a partner, spend more time down there with yourself. It's just... How much could we improve sex lives by saying stop bringing your phone to the bedroom? I think a lot. Yeah. How many episodes do I get sidetracked and talk about sex? I think also a lot. <laughs> so, first problem. You are the problem. Hashtag Taylor Swift. Dopamine, phone usage, dopamine reward loop, short attention span. Hashtag let down. Solution, singular focus. Solution. Get yourself a wake-up light with the birds. Thank me and hate me later. Put your phone in the charger in a different room. Um, do something else before you pick up your phone in the morning. Put a time frame on it or say, I can do this after I've stretched. So for a while, I was really a little bit addicted to the phone. I was like, I put this habit in my habit app. And I'm like, I can check off this habit of stretching if I stretch before I've touched my phone. So it was important for me that I did the stretching first and afterwards I was allowed to take my phone so I kind of postponed it and postponed it until I didn't have to think about it anymore um all of that helps and so one of the things I've done over the past couple of months is decided to have a singular focus so I'm not doing two things at once anymore so that also means if I'm standing in line at the supermarket I'm standing in line at the supermarket if I'm doing my makeup before a podcast I shouldn't also be going over the podcast prep but I did that is there a law against taking one of your team members with you in your bathroom and having them sit on a bathtub with the podcast prep to walk you through it? If there is a law against that, I just broke it. <laughs> no, but so in general, I'm just practicing being present in a meeting. Podcast recordings this afternoon, amazing. I was unreachable for three hours. Did the house burn down? Apparently not, still standing. Um, you know, also the fun part is by the time you are reachable again, people mostly have fix their own problems. I have this with my team a lot. They used to contact me for problems. Now they don't anymore. <laughs> they just fix them themselves. <laughs> it's great. You don't realize shit like that. It's true. I used to get a lot of questions. Now I barely get any questions. They're very self-sufficient because I also stopped being there the entire time. 
It's kind of with your clients. If you always respond to your clients, they're like, don't be a bitch, be a good coach and stuff. But if you are always fixing stuff for other people, you're never teaching them to fix it themselves. Um, Singular focus was one of my intentions. I'm keeping that intention and I feel like that has really, really lowered my stress levels and my heart rate, by the way, which I track with my aura ring a lot. Second thing we can do to turn off is... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> is we create a context switch. I'm pretty sure I made this up many, many years ago. So it's, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you ask what is Amy's view on a context switch and you ask ChatGPT and ChatGPT will give you an explanation about this. <laughs> There's probably a lot of research and stuff about this, but just what I do is as a highly sensitive person, which I think many of us are starting to become because we are just all overstimulated, is... I have a bunch of rituals to switch off. So for example, I work from home a lot. So I don't have the car ride. Love the car ride, by the way. Just driving home, mm -mm, context switch. After 40 minutes, I'm a different person. If I go home from the office, but I'm not always at the office, I'm home a lot. So often my boyfriend will come home and I'm like, hello, bye. I'm gonna put on a different outfit. So I go upstairs, tip, tip, tap, tip, tap put on different clothes, go downstairs. Now my entire closet is a mess. And I cook in a completely different outfit. He jokes about this. He's like, how many different outfits a day do you wear? At least four. Today, we're at five, I think. It's also because, hello, I'm in front of the camera. (laughs) But creating a context switch at the end of the day is so important. So I tend to look at it as a morning context switch between, you know, waking up before you start working. Create a context switch, like getting ready for work. For me, that means actually making sure I am dressed like an actual human. um, And I've done something with my hair and makeup. That's a context switch and I'm like ready to tackle the day. Then at the end of my work day, I'll create a context switch before I start cooking. I don't think I cook in the same outfit I've worked in. I just don't. Have you ever seen me do that? No. At the end of the day, I, I'm looking at Annalise now. At the end of the day, one of the first things I do when I'm done working, I'm like, ha ha ha, different outfit. <laughs> And I want softness around me. This is my context switch. It used to be showering. It used to be maybe going for a walk. Um, In wintertime, I am just a wuss and I don't go outside for walks, apparently. Maybe it's on my treadmill. Um, Putting on different clothes, having a shower, stuff like that. It helps. And then at the end end of the day, I also have a context context switch, which is in my bedroom, bathroom, skincare, wash my feet, stuff like that. Um, People think it's weird, but I always wash my feet and my hands. Uh, (laughs) People who know me well know this. I never, ever go to bed without washing my feet and my hands because they touch a lot (laughs) during the day. And I don't mean this in a sexual way. Uh, (laughs) It's just... Also, when I get massages, I'm like, yes, extra massage on my head and my hand and my feet, please. Because there's a lot of impact. So, especially, again, being highly sensitive, I'm like, washing my hands, washing my feet. That's one of my rituals. And then I sleep better. Um, So, context switches when you have to switch states of being. This also helps... Maybe you're like me, you're like fairly dominant in the workplace. A while back, I was sitting on the couch and I was being a bit rude to my boyfriend. And he was like, you have to do something about this. I'm like, I'm sorry. I was still in red mode. I haven't switched. Give me a few minutes. (laughs) So just being mindful of, for example, if you're dating and you're in a, a very, you know, high up position where sometimes you need to be a little bit more tough in the workplace by the way this does not mean I'm a bitch at work but sometimes I come from like having a difficult day or having difficult conversations and I'm still there but that's not the energy I want to put out at home in my kitchen so that's why the physical switch helps and for example if you start dating this is also something to be aware of that you don't arrive at a date in your work energy I am a fan of just being yourself in all situations. But let's be honest, sometimes you just have to channel more or different parts of yourself in those situations. And I am myself in my relationship, I am myself in my workplace, but I do have to use certain sides of me a bit more. Again, not sexual. Why do you keep thinking this is sexual? It's you, you're making these jokes, not me. Yes, I'm talking to you. (laughs) Um, Easiest way for me to do this is just um, close washing, water helps, and my hair. 
uh, I've worked with my cousin for a while and she thinks it's very funny. When I go from content creation to being in a meeting, I will just put my hair up. This always happens. My team can probably confirm this. They're nodding yes. Uh, my hair just, it's different. Content creation, talking to people. I make sure there's this whole curly vibe. When I'm actually in work, work mode, uh, more operational, more boss mode, the hair will be up. This is also a context switch I create for myself. Um, what can also help within that is actually the third thing I wanted to talk about, which is your parasympathetic nervous system. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. But so your parasympathetic nervous system compared to your sympathetic nervous system is what you need after stress situations. So for example, if that's doing well, it helps your digestion. When you are very stressed, your digestion is going to suffer. When you are relaxed, your digestion can flow. So activities you can do for your parasympathetic nervous system are things like walking, having a bath, breathing, yoga, hugging people, I think. Um, and these are just things that lower your nervous system. The number one thing for me here is, for example, taking a bath um, or just breathing, which I'm currently forgetting about because <laughs> there was just a little bit of an interruption in the podcast and now I'm out of breath. Um, I like to look at this as if you have trouble turning off, let's imagine you are a little baby, which we all know you are a little baby. I am a little baby. We're all a little baby. The littlest of babies is my cat, Billy. I saw this meme this week and it said, cat under one years old, little baby, cat, one to two years old, little baby. And it just kept on saying the same thing. And then at the end, it was like, cat over 10 years old, elderly, little baby. And I laughed. You can only get this if you have a cat. If you're a dog person, please fuck off. No, I'm just kidding. You are also welcome if you're a dog person. Um... I also like dogs. I just really, really love my cat. My cat is one of the greatest things that has ever happened to me. Um, let's imagine you are a little baby. You just went to work at the office. as like a baby in a little suit. <laughs> People were asking you questions all day long. You answered so many emails. The equivalent of you went to a birthday party as a toddler. You went to a birthday party, you got so much sugar and dopamine and there was a clown, you were on the bouncy house castle and and then you come home. What will your mom do? If your mom takes good care of you, it's going to be like, I'm going to soothe you. We're not going to put on loud music and do a bunch of other very tiring things. We're just going to kind of just gently soothe, maybe rock you in the chair, maybe have a little bath, maybe put on a different outfit, sleepwear, nice and cuddly, here's your teddy bear. It's lowering the parasympathetic nervous system. You and I are also like these little babies, that's why the context switch is so important, and also what we kind of need to do, like, when we have tiny kids... You're like, well, there's an entire nighttime ritual, which is why all parents between the times of 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. are unreachable. Terrible time to do Instagram lives, by the way. All the parents are busy. <laughs> and what are they doing between 7 and 8? Well, they're probably yelling at their kids. No, just joking. It's a little bit of a fight. It's because there's an entire ritual. The bath, the clothes, oh, a little milk in the bed. You see that I have no kids. And um, we as adults, we're like... I just rolled from the couch into my bed, still in the same sweats I was wearing five hours ago. Hey, Amy, why am I such a bad sleeper? Well, you sicko, you're still in bed scrolling through your phone. Did you do your nighttime ritual? No, you're not. <laughs> you are not taking care of yourself like a little baby. If the little baby gets washed before they go to bed, why don't you get washed? Why didn't you take off your makeup? Please do better skincare what my skincare person would say um it's come to this to the point where i feel like i need to trash this episode again it's a nice nice point that i've reached in every episode i've recorded today um but so the thing is walking baths breathing yoga hugs these things help to lower so what happens to you if you are currently struggling to turn off okay this is important for the end of your day um so maybe take a bath or a shower or go for a walk but we, you can level up and reach level two of this Mario game if you actually build in breaks in the middle of the day. So we have one person who works on our team. Her name is Caroline. It's amazing. Every day, what does she do? She goes for a walk. And then we're all just sitting there eating. And she's like, bye! Puts on her pink coat, goes for a little walk, and she comes back refreshed. 
She gets 10,000 steps every day. She's doing amazing. And it's because she's built in these habits that literally lower her nervous system, which is also why she has such high energy at other times, because she's really taught herself to do this. She walks to work, she walks back from work, she goes for a walk midday. So everyone has an hour long lunch break. Some of us spending spend it working 45 minutes extra and then an, a quarter long lunch break. Some of us like Caroline actually say, I eat in one half an hour and then the other 30 minutes are spent on going for a walk. Boom, her body is doing great. And all of us are almost dying. No, that's an exaggeration. <laughs> Shout out to Caroline for the walks and the inspiration. So um, yeah, lower the nervous system. I did it yesterday. I was in a meeting all afternoon long. I had a very, very hard day. And um, within that team, we don't really have a habit of going for walks. I do have to say we have it as a habit in the fast forward team. We were fairly good at that. Also big launch days. We still go for walks and stuff like that. We've really taught ourselves this but in my other business we don't really have it has a habit we had been in a meeting for about two hours i knew we had another two hours to go to talk about really big strategy stuff so i said let's take a break and go outside for a walk and we did that and when we came back everyone was in a better mood so your stress lowers your mood heightens life is amazing and you have some vitamin d by vitamin d i mean sunshine not a different type of vitamin d if that's happening at the workplace you have a problem, you should call HR. Uh, <laughs> and then the last thing that I'm going to give you today as a tip, if you're still listening after all of that shit, is um, at the end of the day, I think this is a big one, is you might not be able to turn off because it feels like your brain is scattered and you haven't given everything a spot. So there I think about Marie Kondo. Marie Kondo says, your house is messy because not everything has gotten a spot in your house. Like your keys are everywhere because you don't have a, little spots for your keys um this kind of happens to your tasks and ideas and to do's so having a good task management slash to-do system is so 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 important this could be for groceries maybe you're like oh my god my head is swimming i forget the same thing when i go to get groceries every day maybe it's because you have a bunch of tasks i know if i don't write it down as a task it's not gonna happen so I've created a really good system for myself where I know what do I need to do today, tomorrow, by the end of the week, what am I laid on? This also happens sometimes and I have this dashboard where I can see all of this with a bunch of filters. And at the end of the day, I don't just finish one thing or a phone call and then like, boop, bye. No, I literally take the time to recap my day. Like, okay, what happened today? Do I still have things that I need to do today? Is there something that really can't wait? Could I already get some feedback on something? Could I give this a different spot? Oh, am I still postponing this thing? Maybe I need to put it in my calendar when I'm going to do this so that you really kind of recap your day. Another way to do this is by filling out a little questionnaire for yourself at the end of the day, like what went well today, what could have gone better and what's missing for future success. So what went well could be that you're like, hello, my name is Amy. What went well today is I recorded three epic podcasts. And everyone who listened to my podcast is definitely going to give you give me a review on Apple Podcasts. That went amazingly today. I so hope you're going to give me a review. <laughs> um, and then maybe what could have gone better is I could have gone for that walk at midday. <laughs> didn't go for that walk. I really wanted to go for a walk, but I got distracted and I didn't. And I got distracted because I was checking in on Slack, which I didn't have to do at midday. I could have just done it at the end of my day when I was planning on that. And then what's missing for future success. I'm quite happy with today. I don't know if I'm missing anything. Quite happy. Yeah. Um, this is something to recap your day. If you would just do this for a single week, you're going to learn so much. And one of the things you're going to learn, what could have gone better? That question is you're going to say, I could have gotten less distracted because when you get distracted, by the way, the distraction isn't the problem. The phone thing isn't the problem. It's the fact that it takes you over 23 minutes to get back to the thing you were actually doing when you get distracted. So I have prepared this sheet for you. It's like a worksheet. It's a couple of pages long. It's a seven day sheet. You can print it out and it's going to ask you to highlight in what energy on a high or not, you ended your day. And then the three questions. And I want to invite you to use this for, let's say, five days during your next work week. Start today. And you're going to see 
that you feel much more calm at the end of the day because you have a little bit of a ritual because you fill it out. And you're also going to learn what you need to improve within your days so that you get to turn off more and you're going to feel less stressed in your business. So this is my gift to you because you made it so far through all of my stupid jokes and you can grab it for free and print it out through fastforwardamy.com forward slash energy management. So I'll link it up in the description as per use, by use, I mean usual. Yes, I am a millennial who has turned 30 and this is what you're going to get from now on in the podcast. And um, I'm going to repeat the link. It's fastforwardamy.com forward slash energy management. And um, let's recap all of this by saying a big part of this problem here, why none of us are able to turn off is because we're like, oh my God, I need likes. I need money. Otherwise, I'm not worthy. Just a quick reminder. You are already worthy. You are giving it your all. You are worthy also when you're not making money. You're worthy when you're not getting any likes. You are doing better than you think you are. You are so hard on yourself. If you were that little baby, would you be as mean? No, but would you frazzle the baby as much as you're frazzling and distracting yourself? No. So let's take it a bit easier on ourselves. Let's be a bit more compassionate and treat ourselves like a baby. Goodbye. See you sometime later on in the year or next week, Tuesday, for a new episode.